All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining me this evening. Uh, today, we're going to go over a lot of information. I don't want to bore you guys to death, so I tried to uh, eliminate a few slides. It used to take me about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half when I got a lot of questions. So we've trimmed down it a little bit. So anyway, without any further ado, let's talk about uh, turning 65 and your Medicare options. All right. So we're going to be covering a few different things. Obviously, let me move my head out of the way because I'm away from you guys. We're going to cover the four parts of Medicare, of course. Your two choices for Medicare coverage, Medicare Supplement, Medicare Advantage. We're going to go over what Medicare covers, what it doesn't cover. We're going to talk about Medicare Supplements, how to compare them, how to shop for them. And we're also going to talk about, of course, Medicare Advantage plans, how to compare those and how to shop for those. We'll also go over Part D drug coverage and important enrollment dates. And I'm sure we'll get into some other things. I want to save at least 15 to 20 minutes at the end for a little Q&A. Most of the time, I'll cover the majority of questions, but there's always a few. So if you don't mind, if you have questions, just type them into the chat. And at the end, I'll run through them all as quickly as possible. And if we run out of time and it gets crazy, we can always schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, a phone call, or you can just email me information and I can email you back, whatever it is. I'm very flexible. All right, guys. So let's go. We're looking at now. Paul Barrett, who is he? Well, I'm a licensed health insurance agent. As you can see on the right, that's my license. That's my license number. No shadiness here, guys. Full transparency. There's my address. You want to come beat me up if you don't like what I have to say, come on over. Uh, but seriously, born and raised in Long Island. I'm a local guy, just like most of you, I'm sure. Husband, father, dog lover. My wife told me to put that. I do have three dogs. I do love them. Uh, I've been licensed in 2001. Not that it matters to you, but I have a lot of experience. In 2007, I transitioned to Medicare. And ever since, I haven't looked back. I've been laser focused, and Medicare has been 90% to 95% of my business every year. Anything I do outside of Medicare has to do with senior products as well. Maybe long-term care, final expense, things like that. Uh, but nothing, I'm not an auto insurance guy part-time. I'm not a homeowners. I'm not doing life insurance all over the place. I'm not a financial planner. I really am a Medicare uh, agent. That's what I specialize in. All right, so you can see I'm licensed in a bunch of states. Most importantly, I've only invited people to New York to this because New York has different laws and rules, and there's a lot of misinformation that confuses a lot of New Yorkers, so I wanted to separate New York from the rest of the country. So just in case you were wondering why New York's a guaranteed issue state, uh, most other states aren't. We have New York, we have Connecticut, we have Maine, we have Massachusetts, four states that are always guaranteed issue. Guaranteed issue means no underwriting, in case you were wondering what that means. I know sometimes I get caught up and use some jargon. If I do do that and you guys catch me, throw it in the chat. I apologize. I'll do my best to be as layperson as I can. All right. So what if you had Medicaid? Get that question a lot somewhere in the middle of the thing. If you have Medicaid and you are going to be on Medicare or Medicaid, you want to just skip the presentation because it's really not uh, designed to meet your needs. It's not going to answer your questions. It's a whole different beast. It's called DSNP dual uh, special needs plan. And you'll have a, a company that can manage your Medicare and Medicaid together. And there's all kinds of different things that go along, but we're not covering anything uh, with that. That would bring us into two hours worth of a presentation. So take that number down if you like, give us a call in the office tomorrow. I'd be happy to answer any questions or you could always email us, check us out on the website as well. All right, so let's go over the four basic parts of Medicare. Everybody hears all these letters all the time, but what are they, right? So part A, part A, that's part of original Medicare. That's A for hospital coverage, okay? Part B, that's our medical coverage. And when you say hospital medical, part A hospital means inpatient stuff, right? So you could be in a skilled nursing facility, a hospital, a psychiatric ward. Uh, you could have a special home health care situation, things like that. Part B, that's when I say outpatient, that means anything that's not overnight stays. Typically, you can have an outpatient surgery. You can get durable medical equipment. Maybe you need a walker. Maybe uh, you need one of those chairs to lift you up the stairs, crutches. Uh, you can need CAT scans, PET scans, MRIs, lab work, wellness visits, doctor visits. You get the point. Anything that's not an overnight stay, even an emergency room, that's considered uh, covered under Part B. Okay, so you notice I said Part A, Part B, didn't mention anything about drugs. The only drugs you're going to get with your A and B coverage is something that's administered in the hospital. Part D coverage, skipping to the last slide, that's for prescription drugs. You can get it two ways. 
either with the Medicare Advantage plan here, which is also known as Part C. Medicare Advantage plans, they're like our traditional insurance plans. Sometimes they get a bad rap. Uh, some of them really do uh, a pretty good job and some of them do an okay job, just like everybody else and some stink, just like every other business out there, right? But there are some really good Medicare Advantage plans in New York, so don't be so afraid of them. Whether you're a Medicare Advantage person or a Medicare supplement person makes no difference to us. We just wanna make sure you get the right information so you can process it and choose the plan that makes the most sense for you. So once again, Part C, Medicare Advantage, it's the same thing. All right, so step number one, you wanna decide how you wanna get your coverage, right? We know we're gonna have original Medicare. Everybody that's here watching today knows that they don't have retirement benefits. If you don't have retirement benefits, you're gonna have Medicare Part A and Part B, and there's gonna be some gaps to fill, some co-insurance and things like that we'll get into. So you're gonna decide, am I a Medicare Advantage person? Am I a Medicare Supplement person? So when we look at the slide here, you see on the left, we have original Medicare, it shows A and B. Always, You're always gonna have A and B. That's the foundation for everything, by the way. You can't get a Medicare Advantage plan without parts A and B, and you can't get a Medicare supplement without parts A and B. The only thing you can get without having both A and B is a drug plan. If you have uh, Medicare Part A or Medicare Part B, you can get a drug plan, okay? But that's not complete coverage and it's not very normal. So on the left-hand side, start with A and B, decide whether you want supplemental Medicare coverage. Medicare coverage through a supplement or Medigap, also uh, another acronym to confuse people. Basically, think of it as a vitamin, right? You take vitamin C because you're deficient in vitamin C. You take vitamin E because you're deficient in vitamin E. So Medicare doesn't cover everything. You no, know, everyone thought it covered everything. Everybody thought it was free. That's not the case, guys. So Medicare doesn't cover everything. So you, you really should have additional coverage if you want to protect yourself from large bills, okay? So obviously on the left side, typically if you're gonna be an original Medicare person and a Medicare supplement person, Medicare supplements only cover what A and B covers. So that means you still don't have drug coverage. If you want drug coverage, then we're looking at adding a standalone Part D plan. So you see on the left, you get Parts A and B, you get a Medicare supplement and you get your drug plan. And that pretty much completes your traditional health insurance coverage. On the right-hand side, you can do a Medicare Advantage plan, also known as Part C. It's gonna cover A, it's gonna cover B, almost always covers Part D. It says usually there, uh, more and more veterans are getting involved with Medicare, and I'm not gonna get specific into all the veteran things, but uh, even some union members now I have here in New York, they get drug coverage for life from their union, and VA people, veterans, CHAMP VA, all that good stuff, TRICARE for Life, they have prescription coverage as well. So sometimes they just want some of the extra benefits you can get with a Medicare Advantage plan or a second opinion, and it makes sense to get a plan without a drug plan. 99% of you are going to get a traditional plan, a PPO, an HMO, whatever it is. It'll cover hospital, it'll cover medical, it'll cover prescriptions, all on one plan. All right, so let's talk about original Medicare Part A. It's the hospital coverage. We said that already. As you start looking at it, it's kind of important to understand all the basics. Let me move my head out of the way again. All right. So you're going to be eligible, first of all, for Medicare Part A at 65. That's when it starts. You're allowed to enroll up to three months before, of course, the month of, three months after. We'll go into that later. But as long as you've worked at least 10 years or 40 quarters or you're married to somebody that did, you're not going to have to worry about paying a premium for Medicare Part A. It will be free. All right. Basically, it's covered from all the taxes you paid throughout your lifetime. All right. Now, when you look up here, Medicare covers 90 days of inpatient hospital care. When you have days one through 60, as you can see at the top of the screen, we have a $1,632 deductible. Now, for most of us out there, deductibles typically mean you pay the deductible and then the coverage kicks in, whether it covers at 80%, 100%, 90%, whatever it is, that's typically the way the deductibles work. But with Medicare, that's not the case. So the Part A deductible, that $1,632 is going to be per incident. That is very different for most deductibles. I don't know of any other deductibles that work per incident. To me, when you say per incident, I think copay. But they call it a deductible. So if you're in the hospital for three weeks because you had a heart attack, you come back out and you go back in three weeks later because of that same heart condition, you won't get charged $1,632 again. But 
if you go in for a separate incident, if you go in months down the road, you will have a $1,632 deductible to pay again. So you could have a hospital stay for a heart attack. Four months later, you can go back for another heart attack. You'll get charged again. If you go in within the same 60 days, that first window, then no, they won't charge it to you again. But if you go in just three weeks later and it's because you broke your leg, guess what? If you have to stay in overnight, 1632. Now, when you move down in the slide, you see an obnoxious number of $13,400. $64, that's for a 90-day hospital stay. That's what's going to cost you. You see, you owe $408 per day for day 61 through 90. Uh, the slide, you know, I'm not in love with it. It, it It's kind of scary looking, but when was the last time you heard of anybody being in the hospital that long? So I don't get too crazy about that stuff. But the 1632 over and over again definitely bothers me. All right, and if you end up going... To your lifetime reserve days, you can see it gets this expense of $800 per day. And then we have up to $61,464. All right. Why did, why this slide is so obnoxious is because there's no maximum out of pocket with Medicare. Medicare itself is the only insurance I know for health insurance that doesn't have a maximum out of pocket. Maximum out of pocket, for everyone that doesn't know, is basically a nice way of saying a cap on your spending for your medical needs, right? So a lot of Medicare Advantage plans have max amount of pockets between 3,400 and 6,700 in some areas. And uh, if you're in New York, they could be anywhere from 6,700 typically up to about 8,300 for Medicare Advantage plans. Now, what does that mean? It's not a deductible. Everyone gets confused. You see that large number. Oh my God, that deductible is huge. And with the Affordable Care Act, there are some really ridiculous deductibles here in New York. So it's understandable how you can think that. But Max amount of pocket, it's your safety net. It means if you reach, if your plan has a $6,700 max amount of pocket, and God forbid you reach it, you will be covered 100% from that point on for the rest of the year. Each calendar year, January 1st, it will reset for you. All right, so original Medicare Part B. It's the outpatient medical coverage. Here we go. We're talking about being eligible once again at 65. You can delay it, of course, if you're working. Uh, you know, you'll have a special election period. As long as your company uh, is a sizable company and has more than 20 employees participating in their plan, you don't have to worry about enrolling in Part B and paying extra premium. We'll go over that slide later. It's going to cost $174.70 for most of us. That's the base premium. If you make over uh, $103,000 for the year as a single or two hundred and six dollars for the year as a couple, then you get charged what they call an income-related adjustment. And I have... All that stuff, I can email it to you if you want, but I didn't want to go through every because the majority of people don't end up paying more. And uh, it just confuses people. I don't want to confuse people. I want to give you as much simple information as possible. So you see here, we have a deductible for Part B. It's going to be $240. $240, that's an annual deductible, much more reasonable. You pay it once you're done. That's it for the rest of the year. Then Medicare is going to cover up to 80%, leaving you with 20% yourself to pay. Okay, 20% of a regular doctor visit, no big deal. 20% maybe of a specialist and a little bit more annoying. 20% when you have to pay a surgeon, an anesthesiologist, that's when it starts to get crazy. God forbid you have infusions, you come down with an autoimmune disease, cancer, blah, blah, blah. Don't want to talk about bad things, but these do happen to some clients. 20% of those procedures is crazy expensive. That's why you always want to think about getting either a Medicare Advantage plan or Medicare supplement to cap your costs. We want to make sure that there's a limit of what you can pay. And you get set up in a plan that's affordable and makes sense for you. Now you see here at the bottom, it says, if a doctor does not accept assignment, the doctor can charge an excess charge. That is 100% correct. It says 15% above Medicare assignment. So that means if they're charging $100, they can charge up to $115. You get the point, $200, $230, so on and so forth. All right, no max amount of pocket or cap with original Medicare. Can't say it enough times. I put the, the new thing in the slide here. You see over there to the left, the big circle. New York has a 5% excess charge cap. So unlike the rest of the country, we only have a maximum of 5% that they can charge us if they don't accept assignment, if they agree to Medicare's terms. So if they're accepting Medicare, they can't charge you more than 5% extra. That's what it means. Very simple. So it makes a big difference because in other states, when you start looking at supplement insurance, excess charges come up all the time. And that's how agents get you to buy a higher, more expensive plan. In New York, it's not necessary.
All right, so we're looking at Medicare supplement plans now, also known as Medigap. Okay? Why everything has to have at least two or three names, God only knows. But that's how Medicare works. You have to have Part A and B, said it already. You need to live in the service area for whatever plan you want to be in. You also are going to have to pay a monthly plan premium. All right, these aren't the zero plans that you see advertised on TV, which show a name of George Foreman, uh, you know, and whoever else is doing the commercials these days. Point is, it's private insurance on top of original Medicare, and they're going to work together to make sure that they're covering your hospital deductible and as much coinsurance as you want, depending on which plan you pick. You could have 100% of your coinsurance covered, or you could have co-pays, or you can have a different percentage of coinsurance. There's lots of different options. Typically, uh, most people go with either Plan N or Plan G. I'll show you those in the next slide. Costs are going to vary on these plans, right? They're going to vary greatly, especially in New York. It's wild. Okay, There's not a lot of competition for Medicare supplements. It's a very highly regulated state. A lot of people, when I say people, insurance carriers do not want to come into New York and participate, even though we have lots of money, we have lots of potential clients for them, tons of seniors. Uh, it's just not worth their aggravation with all the rules. Uh, so we basically have just a couple of plans in each county that are offering uh, coverage for you. All right, so Medicare supplement, important facts, guaranteed coverage, right? When you first turn 65, they always talk about this, guarantee, 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 do it now. Once again, New York is a guaranteed issue state. So what does that mean? It doesn't matter what day you enroll, what month you enroll, what year you enroll, guess what? You never have to answer medical questions. Uh, doesn't mean that you can just enroll at any time. There are some enrollment rules, but you're never going to be denied because of medical coverage, because of your age, because of your height and weight, because you're a smoker, any of that silly stuff. None of those questions are ever going to be asked. Ideally, when you're getting on a Medigap plan, you want to do it early. I always recommend doing it at least you know, two or three months before you're going to be ready for Medicare. Have everything lined up in a row. Make sure when you pick your plan, you get all the information, you understand it, make sure everything's spelled correctly. God forbid anything's spelled wrong or you get the wrong plan. It happens. People make mistakes. And next thing you know, you can't use your insurance because the doctor's office wants to make sure they get paid. You want to make sure you get treated. So make sure you line up in a row. If you do it early, you never have to worry about anything. In New York, you never have to worry about answering medical questions. You just have to make sure you're eligible. How are we eligible? You have Part A, you have Part B, you live in the service area where the plan's offering, and you can afford to make the monthly premium payments. It's that simple. You're going to get a complete choice of doctors. Any doctors that accept Medicare, any hospitals, that goes nationwide. Now, in New York, 97% of the doctors currently are opting in for Medicare. So what does that mean? There's only 3% of doctors that you can't see without having some kind of out-of-pocket expenses that you don't want to pay. So 97%. That's that's a great that's a great number of doctors. Most of us have had insurance plans during our life where you've been told, oh, this doctor hasn't accepted, that doctor hasn't accepted, so on and so forth. So when you get to Medicare, if you have a supplement, it really opens up. You get a lot of choices, a lot of freedom. There's also no prior authorizations and no referrals necessary. You're going to have standardized coverage as you move over to the right side, right? You see the twin babies. That's to illustrate that if you're going to get, and here's the two most popular plans where we are right now in New York, you're going to get Plan N or Plan G. Every company that offers Plan N and every company that offers Plan G is going to have identical coverage, just like the picture. What does that mean? How could they all be the same? That's what they are, standardized. No matter where you are, they're going to be standardized. And depending on what county you're in, that's where the pricing comes in. Each company adjusts their pricing for whatever it is that they want to do. So... You could have a plan G for one price and a plan G that's higher, 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 lower, whatever it is. But plan G is always going to cover the same things. 100% of hospitalization, you have to pay your Part B deductible, then you have no coinsurance. So you pay nothing for any co-pays, doctor visits, outpatient surgeries, nothing. Wonderful plan. All right. Just to give you an idea how that works. Now, when we get to this uh, over here, we have a, a chart from I stole I borrowed it from uh, your Medicare and you guide. I don't love the Medicare and you guide. I think it's full of a lot of uh, a lot of words, a lot of things that don't make sense to the average person. But this chart here, I borrowed because it is perfect. Okay, 
So this shows you here at the top, you can see all the letters that I'm looking at here, right? All the letters, you got plan A, plan B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, N, right? You get it, you get all those letters. I have never found anybody on plan B yet, anybody on plan D yet. I have run into people on all the other letters, but typically since I've been doing this, it's been plan F, plan C, plan G, plan F. Now, they stopped, they discontinued offering, Plan F and Plan C to new members back in 2020. So anybody that was born and turned 65 after 2020 will not be able to get Plan F or Plan G. Anybody before then, you are still welcome to apply. Uh, just a little buyer beware. Plan F and Plan C no longer have any new young people getting on, on board into their enrollments which means they don't have anyone just giving them premium and not using the plan. Uh, so typically, the older people get, the more they use their insurance. And with that, ends up being higher rate increases. So they're not adding any new new people to the plan. Typically means they're going to increase their rates a lot quicker than a plan G or a plan N, right? And you can see, you know, you have plan K and plan L right here in the middle. You see they have a maximum out of pocket because they have co-insurance that they share with you, right? So when they so, say 50% of the Part B co-insurance, the co-insurance is 20%, right? Left from the 80. Uh, and what it ends up doing is instead of you paying a full 20%, 50% of 20 is what? 10, okay? So now we're doing math. We're teaching you guys math today. How about that? 10% co-insurance is what it means. I have some people on plan K, they actually love the plan and honestly, you don't get billed that much. So it's good for people that have a lot of doctors but don't have a lot of budget uh, and they just wanna make sure they can see all those doctors and don't mind paying a little out of pocket but can't afford to pay a large premium. Plan L, very similar, 75%. So it's the same type of deal. You're getting a percentage. But you can see all these 100%, Plan G, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, until you get the foreign travel, and of course, the Part B deductible. So that was part of the big move when they changed, got rid of Plan F and Plan C. Those were the only two plans that covered the Part B deductible. As you can see, nobody else is covered, all right? All right, so how do you compare Medicare supplements? Uh, some of these numbers might alarm you. I pulled these off of uh, the Medicare.gov website today. I don't put the company names down. I don't get involved in advertising for anybody. It just keeps everything simpler when you go generic. I don't have to worry about compliance. We're talking in generalizations. The lowest uh, price in our area, 306. And as you can see, companies going down the row, comparing apples to apples because they're standardized plans. Which plan are you going to pick? Most people are going to pick company one. And in this case, company one happens to be a very reputable company, a very good company, and it works out most of the time for most folks. I very rarely have anybody pick anything else. Not a lot of competition. I have never had anybody pick company five or company four. I've had people who liked company three, believe it or not. And uh, they were, they told me it was such a great plan to work. They wanted to still get it. And they jumped on it and then they switched after a few months when they realized that everything I said was 100% accurate. There's no reason to be on a more expensive plan. You're not getting anything extra. You're just paying a lot more in premium. All right, so let's talk about Medicare Advantage plans. What are Medicare Advantage plans? Let's keep this simple. Medicare Advantage plans are just another option for you to receive your Medicare uh, coverage. Okay, so even though you have to have Medicare Parts A and B, once you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, Medicare now pays whichever carrier, could be Aetna, could be Cigna, could be United Healthcare, whoever. There's so many companies out there doing it. They pay that company for you to be your insurance. And what that company has to do, they have to cover everything that Medicare covers as good or better. Okay? Most of the time, it's better. They're going to provide you with a max amount of pocket, which is very important. They're going to provide you with drug coverage if you want it, if you need it. Okay? Uh, they're very low costs compared to Medicare supplements most of the time. Are there some more expensive ones? Sure. There are some designer hybrid Medicare Advantage plans that have a premium, but typically they have very low out-of-pocket for most anything, and they give you some a lot of you know strong extras, good dental, good vision, good hearing, all those different things 
uh, with a large network. So sometimes people like that too, if they can't quite afford a Medicare supplement. All right, but the zero premium plans in our area, everyone always asks, is it a scam? How can they do it? They're not free. They're not free. They're getting compensated every single month you're on the plan from the government, depending on where you live. It goes seniors per capita. Uh, it also, they have a risk model. So the more people that are on a particular plan in a certain area that have uh, high risk conditions and costs more to the plan, uh, they get compensated more. So it's something to know. They get compensated very well to take care of you. And it, people love to tell me all the time, well, it's too cheap. Cheap things aren't good and good things aren't cheap. Uh, if you want a Medicare Advantage plan, New York's definitely one of the states to try it out in. You can always switch back to a supplement. And we have some pretty good plans. Uh, but if you like Medicare supplements, get a Medicare supplement. Just want to make sure everyone understands that when you look at the Medicare Advantage plans, yes, they're zero. Yes, they give you a lot of extras. Uh, but not everything's perfect. They do have networks. They don't have 97% of the doctors that don't know any Medicare Advantage plan that's even close to that. Uh, they're probably 20% less, you know, maybe, maybe somebody's got 80, 85% of the doctors, depending on the area. But if you're the type of person who uses Northwell Health, NYU Langone, and some of these bigger carriers, uh, carriers, pardon me, hospitals that have networks and structures of, you know, you walk into this building and the second you're done with your x-rays, they've already emailed it to the next doctor that you're going to and all that fun stuff then those plans work excellent for that and you don't have to pay much at all. A lot of this comes down to, for most people, what makes you comfortable, what you can afford, and what your lifestyle and health concerns are, all right? So if you're into getting some extra stuff and not paying a lot, Medicare Advantage plans do offer, just about all of them have some vision, some hearing, uh, gym memberships, a lot of them have dental. Uh, if you don't have dental with the plan, a lot of them allow you to purchase it at an additional cost, and it's usually very minimal. And why that's a cool thing, a lot of people that get on Medicare supplements, you know, they ask me about dental, and I tell them, and then they want to buy a plan, and then when I explain to them, you're getting that plan privately. When you get a private dental insurance plan, it's this little uh, little self, little note to you to understand that when you get a standalone dental plan, it's not like getting it through work. It's not like getting it through a Medicare Advantage plan, which is participating with a large group, okay? They're going to charge you higher premium. You're not going to get any major work done for at least eight months. Some of them are nine months. Some of them even 12 months. I've even seen plans that have a really good uh, cap on their annual limit of like 5000 but you don't get to have $5,000 worth of coverage until you've been on the plan for three years. So they're collecting premiums and basically using your premium to pay for whatever it is you're doing. So keep in mind you have to pay $20, $30, $50 even for a Medicare Advantage plan dental add-on, a lot of times it's worth it, especially if you need work today, tomorrow, the next day, because guess what? Pre-existing conditions are held against you. There's no waiting periods. As soon as your plan starts, you can run to the dentist and you can use it. Very, uh, very flexible. And it just makes things easier and you don't have to worry about pre-existing conditions and waiting periods. All right. So now how do we compare Medicare Advantage plans? This is really a lot different than a Medicare supplement plan. I'm using the fruit up there to illustrate, right? It's not apples to apples anymore. It's grapes, it's strawberries, it's bananas, it's oranges, it's pineapples. Now, these numbers I haven't changed in a long time. Most of the plans that we offer in, in our area, typically we're not charging any premium for it. There are some people that like some of the plans. Uh, they feel better about paying a premium and having maybe a lower specialist copay or whatever it is that they're getting. Everybody has their reasons. There's choices and options because not everybody wants the same plan. Not everybody sees things the same way. It's always good to have options, right? So you can definitely see how you have all these different things. You're going to have different doctor networks, different drug formularies. Copays and out-of-pocket limits are going to be different. And these things, guess what? They can change every year. There's a Medicare annual election period, October 15th through December 7th every year. They pay about 25,000 commercials, getting everybody excited about it. And most of the time they're talking about Medicare Advantage plans because that's that's really become uh, super popular. Medicare Advantage plans definitely on the rise, okay? And it's because they're making them better, putting more money into them uh, and the networks are getting expanded. And honestly, 
Medicare itself, the Part B premium is getting expensive. The deductible is getting expensive. And the supplements, of course, are getting more expensive. I've been doing this now literally for 17 years. And if I told you how cheap Medicare was, how cheap the deductible was, and how cheap all you know the supplemental plans were, you'd be like, oh, my God. And God forbid you knew how cheap it was to get Plan G in Pennsylvania after you found out you just paid you know, $306 for it here in New York. Uh, so anyway, when we're looking at how to compare these plans, the most important thing is, well, obviously to me anyway, it might not be to you. You might want to have the most free stuff. But for me, my plan's only as good as what doctors accept it, right? And, and are my drugs covered if I'm taking prescriptions? I want to make sure that I don't have to change the doctors. It's such a pain in the butt. You all know it. I know it. Nobody wants to fill out all that paperwork again, get to know somebody again. Uh, so provider network's important. You want to make sure if you, God forbid you needed surgery, the hospital you'd want to go to is there. Uh, look at prescription drugs. A lot of people don't pay attention because group plans do a much better job paying for prescription drugs, whether it's name brand or generics. A lot of times it's not a big deal. With Medicare, you can go online and you know put a dosage in of 0.5 milligrams for one thing and then put 0.75 and all of a sudden the drug went from $2 to $40 because of the dosage went up or God forbid you're, you're, you're so used to taking a name brand and then you get to Medicare and you find out, well, if I want to take the name brand, it's going to cost me basically $50 a month after I meet my $545 drug deductible. So things to really pay attention to co-pays and out-of-pocket limits. They're very similar for most plans, but they are going to be different. Okay, so these are things you got to be very mindful of. And keep in mind, too, guys, jumping back to the doctor network, probably one of the most important things. If you go on certain carrier sites, I'm not going to name any of them, but some of these carriers offer four, five, you know, three, four, five, six plans, depending on where you are in the county. Some of them have different provider networks for each plan. So even as someone that's been doing this for 17 years, some of these carriers, if I know it's going to be a good fit for somebody, it's torture for me to find which one because I got to look at every directory to make sure the provider's in that exact plan that's going to be right for my client. It could be pretty tedious and it's very easy to make a mistake when looking up doctors. All right, prescription drugs, everybody's favorite part. Uh, very simply, standalone Part D plans go with people that have original Medicare. Right, because we already said original Medicare doesn't have drugs. So if you need a standalone drug plan, you're you're going to have a couple times where enrollment periods are important to you. Number one, the first one. When you're first getting on Medicare, uh, you want to make sure you enroll because they have a late enrollment penalty and it could cost you, you know, as much as one percent of the national average of a drug plan. And it's not a lot of money right away. But the problem is once you miss your enrollment period, you can't enroll into that drug plan usually for another year unless there's some kind of special election going on. If you move, something along those lines. So keep in mind, right? Prescription drug benefits work off a calendar year. What does that mean? Well, most of them have maximum amount of pockets and different tiers, uh, deductibles, etc. We'll get to that slide where you can see it more. In but every year, your deductible resets and all the all the numbers reset, and typically. Year after year after year, you're seeing higher deductibles, higher premium, higher co-pays, higher co-insurance. Part of the Inflation Reduction Act. Just want to warn you, 2024 has gotten a little bit expensive with, with the drug plans compared to last year. It was a huge increase, and they're predicting even higher increases by next year. I would not be surprised if they decide to stop paying agents commission as well for these plans. And I got to be honest, none of us want to help people with these drug plans for the most part anyway. I mean, I do. I say I don't want to, but it's a lot of work, it really is, and we we barely get compensated for it. And it's very important. People need to be able to afford to take their prescriptions. And for a lot of people watching, if you're not taking anything expensive, you're probably like, "What are you talking about? I only spend like eight dollars a month on my five drugs." Good for you. Uh, if you're taking name brand drugs and you're taking insulins and you're taking you know immunosuppressant drugs or whatever it is, you're taking expensive blood thinners. There's so many drugs that cost 600 to $1,000 a month. And then next thing you know, boom, you're in a donut hole. All right, so Part D prescription drug benefits. You see the first column, tiers. 
All right. So I don't know about you, but when I had my health insurance most of my life, the tiers were generic name brand. That was it. Now with Medicare, we have tier one, that's preferred generics, tier two, non-preferred generics, tier three, preferred brand names, tier four, non-preferred brand names. And a lot of companies now have a tier five, tier five are specialty drugs. If you're taking any of those, uh, hopefully you have a boatload of cash sitting around somewhere because they are expensive. All right. Uh, I don't mean to make light of it, but tier five drugs, you know, when clients are on, it's like, oh my God, we got to figure out how we're going to get some kind of aid or something to help you with that. Prior authorization, quantity limits. What does that mean? So a lot of companies will list drugs on their formulary, meaning list the drugs that they cover, but they might require prior authorization. So what does that mean? It means your doctor's got to request uh, authorization to give you that drug. They got to say, all right, Dr. Smith, why does Paul need that prescription? And Dr. Smith doesn't give a good enough reason. They're going to say, try something else. Trying something else is step therapy. Okay, if the doctor pres prescribes it and he writes a real strong letter, yeah, there's a good chance there would be no problem. You get your prior authorization and you take it, no problem. Quantity limits. What are quantity limits? Well, I mean, we're in the opioid world. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest quantity limit things since I've been doing this. Uh, people used to be able to get Vicodins, Oxycontins, and all that good stuff with no problem. Now, because it's been so abused, that's one of the biggest drugs. We have psychiatric drugs. A lot of people taking antidepressants. Your Xanax and Zolofs and sleeping meds and, you know, that with on top of uh, erectile dysfunction for men, all these things uh, that are coming up that 17 years ago were never a problem. Now we have quantity limits and all these different things going on. So just keep in mind when you're choosing your Part D plan, we're not just looking at a plan and say, oh, it's United Healthcare. They're the best. They're the biggest. No, you're going to plug in all your drugs. You want to make sure, and I recommend doing this on Medicare.gov. You plug them all in and you, you take a look. Medicare.gov does a great job at listing all the plans in order based on the cost of the premium and the drug cost combined. That's what you, that's what you care about, right? Total cost, total out of pocket, whichever one's going to give me the, the best deal on the drugs that I take. We don't have a crystal ball. None of these plans, none of them, there's 15 in New York. None of them cover everything. They don't want to. They'll lose money. They don't make a ton of money off off of Part D, okay? They, a lot of them have partnerships with different pharmacies. You know, always notice certain carriers say, oh, if you go to CVS, you get this rate. If you go to Walmart, you'll get this rate. So you always want to try and find a drug plan and a pharmacy in your area that work together so you can get preferred pricing, very important. Step diary, last thing over there on the side, that's when the insurance company busts your chops and just says, try this, try this, try this before you get to use the drug that you really want. So sometimes you have to jump through some hoops to get a really expensive name brand drug. Just something to be prepared for. Part D can be a little sticky, can be a pain in the butt, a little bit of red flags. All right. So when you're looking at it, right, you see the pie chart here, monthly premiums, co-pays, deductibles. You know, each plan is going to be a little bit unique. Uh, like I said, they don't want everybody Okay, they're not going to make money if they have everybody. That's why there's no one best plan that's really good with most of the expensive brand name drugs for this, this, and this, and then all the generic. It just doesn't work. They're going to get wiped out. Everyone jumps on your plan, they overutilize it, and you lose. The idea for insurance is to collect more premiums than you pay out, right? So that's why they diversify their portfolio of plans. It's kind of like a an investment portfolio where you have a little bit of the blue chip stocks, you have some of the higher risk stuff, you have some of the mid, mid cap, you get the point. They're trying to basically protect themselves to make sure that they make money. That's just what insurance companies are in business to do. They're not here to help us so much as they are to make money. So keep that in mind. It's very important when you're comparing your Part D plans, formulary, make sure all your drugs are on it. Check out to see if you have drugs that are going to require step therapy or prior authorizations. You don't want to get stuck in that, okay? If you end up getting stuck in that and there was another plan that was a little bit more expensive, didn't have that stuff, you're probably going to kick yourself in the butt because it can be quite a headache. And God forbid you get ill and you're chasing down doctors, writers, and notes trying to get a prescription approved. All right, so important enrollment dates, Medicare supplements. First of all, you see right in the middle, Part B effective date. Now, in other parts of the country, 
they do lock in your rate if you want to apply six months in advance. You can't do anything. You, you don't even have Medicare until you're at least 90 days before your birth month. Why they do this, I don't know. It makes no sense to me, but I know in other years when I used to do a lot of out of the state, New York state stuff, I did have people that wanted to lock in their rate and they wouldn't have Medicare for 90 days. And then I'd have to follow up with them and make sure they got their Medicare. And it was just very interesting. But for, for our purposes, what do we need to know, right? You can enroll in Medicare 90 days before the month of your birthday. So if your birthday is on the 30th of the month, you can still enroll 90 days before that month starts, right? So if it's January, that's when you're turning 65, you can enroll when? In December, you can enroll in November, you can enroll in October, right? That's three months before. Then you can enroll in January if you needed to. You can enroll in February, and then you can enroll in March also. They give you three months before and three months after for the general enrollment. But for supplements, you have a guaranteed issue as long as you enroll within six months of your Part B effective date. So Medicare Advantage, that's the three months before, the month of, the three months after. Part B effective date here in the middle, you see, you can wait up to six months and still have guarantee issue for your Medicare supplement if you need it, okay? Something to keep in mind. Important enrollment dates for other Medicare. Obviously, this is what I just explained. So your Part B effective date, you have that month, three months before, three months after. Okay, this is when you're enrolling in original Medicare. Ideally, we want to enroll in original Medicare. Where? Uh, Social Security website. So Social Security is the one that administers the application. If you don't have an account there, go online and create one. It's really easy, I promise. If you're one of those people that says, I'm not a computer person, well, then you're going to have to call. Sometimes you can call and you can get through to somebody fairly reasonable and they'll set an appointment for you. They usually don't take your application right then and there, the first call. A lot of the, the uh, Social Security offices around our area are not taking in-person appointments still. Uh, sometimes you can get lucky and walk in. Some of them are doing it, but I've heard a lot of people getting turned away. So just keep in mind before you run down to the local Social Security store, store, office, uh, that you may be turned away. So just make sure you have an appointment, call before you go. Typically, when you enroll in original Medicare, it takes a few weeks before you're going to hear back from them. All right. If you're entitled to Part A and Part B and you're turning 65, there's no reason for you ever to get denied. So it's just a matter of processing. You don't have to worry about anything. All right. So this is one of the most common questions I get, especially now. What if I'm still working and have employer coverage? Well, first of all, you want to confirm with HR, make sure that uh, they don't want you to enroll in Medicare once you get beyond uh, age 65. Sometimes there's a small group. If you have less than 20 employees on the plan, you need to have both Medicare parts A and B. That's Medicare's rule. It's not, you know, it's not the company's. All right. Also, it's important these days, even a lot of the big companies, the plans aren't as good as they used to be. There's a lot more cost sharing. There's a lot more premium deductions from your paycheck. So you want to check with Medicare and see which one's gonna give you a better deal. Some of the coverage with Medicare is pretty outstanding. Whether you get a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare Supplement plan, I've seen many times that it outshines a lot of work plans. And then there's also a lot of work plans that are way better than Medicare. So this is why we weigh our options, guys, and you gotta ask questions, take notes, and make sure you confirm things before you go ahead and take action on anything. All right, sometimes Medicare is just going to be better and sometimes sticking with the employer is just going to be better. That's just how it is. There's no exact answer for that, right? So Medicare insurance shopping tips. Uh, I always say create a list, guys. It's funny because my wife yells at me all the time. Guess what I don't do when I go shopping at the grocery store? I don't have a list. I should. I always come back with tons of stuff I never planned on and never what my wife sent me to the store for. Anyway, list all your doctors, not just their names. Have their phone numbers, the town they're in. What's their specialty? Are they an endocrinologist? Are they a cardiologist? Are they an orthopedic? You know, these things are very important. When you start looking up doctors, you're going to be surprised no matter how odd, how weird you think that person's name is. You're going to see this 32 Dr. You know, Gardy Wadahas. You don't, I just made that up, guys. I don't know who that was, but you get the, you understand. It's very, very simple when you have all the right information. 
but this is what happens. Hi, Paul. Yes. I want you to help me find a Medicare Advantage plan. Great. I would love to. Just uh, tell me what doctors you have and what prescriptions you have and what hospital is important to you and blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. So you have five doctors, but you're, you're not sure what their names are. And you have to have them. I hear this all the time. It blows my mind, guys. Listen, it's okay to be unorganized a little bit, but when it comes to your health care, guys, telling you this, you're going to get taken advantage of. A lot of people can call, someone like myself, doing this for 17 years, and you're going to ask me to look these things up. And if you spell the name wrong, it could take me a long time. Sometimes Google can't even help me. Google is usually pretty good with a misspelling. They'll get me to the closest thing, and I'll be like, oh, it's probably this guy. And then I'll call the office and confirm. But if it's going to take me over an hour to do this work, just think about how long it's going to take you. You don't know all the websites to go to. You don't have the resources at the carriers that I do to ask them questions. Because all I have to do is text people, and they'll look up the carriers for they'll look up the providers for me at specific carriers, whether it's Aetna, Cigna, Humana. You get it, United Healthcare. There's always people that have concierge service with a lot of these carriers to help me with this, and it still takes time. But if you're organized, it takes a lot less time. That's what I'm telling you. Prescriptions, you could really make a big mistake by having the wrong dosage. Sometimes you could be taking a tablet or you can be taking a pill. And if you take the tablet, it's way more expensive. Or if you take the pill, it's way more expensive and the other one's cheaper. The dosage could, could be a big deal. Sometimes the dosages go, go up and the premium, or I should say the copay goes up. And other times you can get 100 milligrams for the same price you get 50 milligrams. So for people that are trying to save money, you can get the 100 milligrams, not telling you to do this, but I know a lot of people do. Chop the pills in half. Now you have double the dosage. These are types of little tricks a lot of my clients like to do. But it's important to know whether it's a generic or name brand also because there's huge price differences a lot of times. Medicare is one of the few uh, insurances that I know that sometimes the brand name is cheaper and covered by more more carriers than the generic. It's weird, but it's, what it, it's true. Most brand names are not going to be cheap. You're not going to get a great deal unless you're getting some kind of extra help or participate in some kind of state pharmaceutical assistance program or something along those lines. But understand what's important to you. It's very important that you have this list of things because if you're going to call somebody, a lot of people won't figure it out. They'll just say, all right, I'm going to put them on a PPO. Any doctor that accepts Medicare, they can go to and they'll figure it out. You don't want to have that headache. You start going to the doctors and find out that the agent you called at the 1-800 number, you know, didn't do their due diligence. Or if you called somebody at one of those commercial Joe Namath hotlines, those guys pay a lot of money to speak to you, right? Commercials cost money. Those calls aren't free. You're not getting a free review uh, like you would with an independent agent like myself or many of the other local brokers that'll sit and talk to you, explain things to you, send you information, you know, not pressure you. Those guys are going to want to sell a new enrollment every single time, right? They have quotas to hit and they have to make a certain amount of sales. Otherwise, they're going to lose their job. It's that simple. Never going to lose my job unless I decide I want to do something else. That's the same for any other independent agent or broker, right? So I personally always prefer to deal with the local person, but there's no problem with calling carriers directly. There's no big deal about, you know, calling the one 800 number if you're educated and you understand but they're very sneaky. And if you don't know anything about this business, it's not hard for someone that knows a little bit to just talk circles around you and be like, okay, that makes sense. Let me just go with that plan. And next thing you know, you're miserable. All right. Understand what type of coverage works best for you. Not everybody's going to like a Medicare supplement. Not everybody's going to like a Medicare Advantage plan. All right. Decide which one you think you feel better with. And keep in mind, you're blessed to live in New York State, even though we're expensive. You can switch back and forth between each coverage every year. Try, try them both. See what you like best. Or just pick the one you think you like right away and stick with whatever works for you. All right. Think about your current health situation when you're choosing a plan and your lifestyle. Some people are definitely uh, would do better with a Medicare supplement than a Medicare Advantage plan because they go to the doctors so much. Those co-pays, no matter how little they are, they add up and they, they basically just you get co-paid to death. It's ridiculous. So you don't want that to happen. You want to choose a plan based on your needs, your budget, your lifestyle, not somebody else's. Why do I say this? Because I talk to so many people and I enroll them in a plan after spending hours with them on multiple occasions. 
Then they call me back a couple of weeks after they enroll because they told somebody the plan they have. And their neighbor says, oh, my God, you should have gotten this plan. Why did you get that? And then I got to try and talk to you and explain why you got that plan. And your friend didn't tell you that it was $306 for plan G. You still had to pay 240 before they covered anything, that you had to buy a separate drug plan, that it didn't have dental, it didn't have vision, it didn't have hearing, it didn't have, you know, a gym membership, whatever, whatever it is that made you decide you wanted that other plan and vice versa. Okay. And if you're talking about someone that has one Medicare Advantage plan or another Medicare Advantage plan or one Part D and another Part D, if you paid attention at all, you know, different formularies for drug plans, right? They could be on your Medicare Advantage plan or a standalone drug plan. Each plan is very different. So you can take a couple different drugs than your wife or your friend or whoever, and you should definitely be on a different plan. It's that simple. Same thing goes for providers. One plan might have a lot of providers. The other plan might have low co-pays, but not so many providers. Which would you rather have? I want the plan that has all my doctors. That's how I feel. You choose the way you feel, right? There's no one best plan for everybody, guys. That's a fact. That's one thing I can tell you. I get asked it all the time. What's the best plan? Tell me what the best plan is. What is, you know, what does your family have? My family has Cigna, Medicare Advantage, Aetna Medicare Advantage, United Healthcare Supplement Plans. I mean, that's the three main plans that my family's on. And they're all on whatever they feel most comfortable with. It's very simple. They don't sell. My goal is to educate you, help you choose a plan. If you want help enrolling, doing the paperwork, you want somebody that's going to be your, you know, your advocate when you have need for Let's say you lost your card, you got overbilled, whatever it is. Uh, you don't want to call an insurance company and tell your story 18 times, especially the way everybody's outsourcing these days. You go from the Philippines to Pakistan to wherever. No offense to anybody that lives in the Philippines or from the Philippines or Pakistan. But when you start calling these people, it's not their first language. They don't understand logic. They're just reading from a book. It's frustrating. We all know it. I don't want to get frustrated. So... I take on that burden for you. I offer a lot of customer service. You can text me issues. You can email me issues. You can call me, of course. And then I forward it to my concierge reps at United Healthcare, Aetna, Cigna, Humana, WellCare, Health First. You get it. There's somebody at every company that works for me because I've been doing it for years. I know pretty much everybody. And that's one of the biggest advantages of having a local agent or broker. Make sure you ask lots of questions. Get started early and get organized. You really want to make sure you have all your lists in order. Uh, and I highly recommend it. I think I've just said it and beat the dead horse. Work with an independent agent, someone that represents all the major carriers, right? Not Nobody offers every carrier, but most agents, if they're not lazy, are going to offer Cigna, Aetna, Humana, United Healthcare, Health First, Emblem Health, you know, all the big companies that are local here, Excellus Blue Cross, Highmark Blue Cross, Mutual of Omaha, you know, MVP, pretty much every carrier under the sun we represent. There are a couple that we don't, and that's because they just it doesn't make sense. Uh, but when you're looking to work with somebody, just think about it as car shopping, right? If you weren't sure what kind of car you wanted, you thought maybe you wanted a Honda, maybe you wanted a Hyundai, but you know you also like the Volvo. Wouldn't it be nice if you can go to one lot, just drive all three cars, ask questions about all three cars? And then figure out which one you want. Can't do that with brand new cars, unfortunately. There's no brand new car lots that have multiple brand new car brands. So that's what we do. Local independent agents with that with that car lot that has Humana, Cigna, Aetna, United Healthcare, Blue Cross, you know, Health First, Emblem Health, Excellus Blue Cross, Mutual of Omaha. You get the point. These are all carriers in our state that we work with. And it doesn't matter to us as agents, we get compensated from the carriers, not from you. It doesn't cost you anything to work with us. And we know, you know, the pros and cons of each carrier because we have a lot of experience working with them. So we got two ways we can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. This is a little noxious, this slide. I didn't make it, uh, but I do agree with it, right? If you enroll direct with an insurance company, you can see. By all the red, no. You're not getting you're not getting quotes from 20 carriers, not gonna tell you quotes from anybody else. They won't tell you about the history of their rates, you know, and that's for Medicare supplements typically. Annual rate shopping, of course not. Help with Medicare appeals, no. Uh, annual Part D help, no. Ongoing education, no. Pretty much it's like calling your cable company. 
you enroll, you get it. It's very easy to enroll in uh, cable, right? You can get the highest cable package. You can get your internet set up real quick and easy. The problem with your internet, now you have to be on hold for 20 minutes. They're going to walk you through some steps that you have to try yourself before they'll give you to a human. It's the same type of experience you get if you work with any of these carriers. United Healthcare, Blue Cross, Atlas, I don't care who it is. It's always easiest to get through the sales department, to get enrolled. They're very helpful. When you have a problem, that's a different story. So just keep that in mind. Independent agents, I believe in this wholeheartedly. This is why I became an independent agent. So I can give you quotes from 20 different carriers. I do know the rate trend in history. Of course, we help you with the application. We make sure that goes through because that's how we get compensated. Annual rate shopping, absolutely. Why? Why do we do this? Why do we help you with Medicare appeals, annual Part D help, ongoing education? Because we get paid residually. What does that mean? It means the longer you're my client, the more money that I'll make. And it's important to understand we don't get paid a lot for any one client. That's the fact. Okay. We get paid very little per client. So we need to be very helpful. We need to keep our clients happy for long periods of time. So our goal is always not to have a client for a year or two. It's to have you for the rest of your life. So we pretty much bend over backwards to try and make sure that we do that for you. All right. So we already got on over this stuff. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Non-biased. I, I'm completely independent. I could care less which coverage anybody gets. I will recommend sometimes when people look at particular plans that I know are having issues financially that might be, not be here the next year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know. Advisor on the ground. What does that mean? <laughs> no, I'm not laying on the ground. Uh, my son always jokes about that when he hears me say it, but on the ground meaning, I know, I get invited to the round table events at different carriers, round table events. What does that mean? They talk to me about feedback from my clients because they care. I have a lot of clients. They want to know what my clients think, how they feel, what's going on, what works, what doesn't work. And when I tell them, they tend to care. And when I ask for help, they care because I've been working with them for 17 years. Every year, we review your coverage. Why? Because it could change. What else could change? Your health could change. Your budget can change. Life can change. Maybe you moved. Maybe you got divorced. Maybe someone passed away and you don't have the same income. Whatever it is, it's always important to review your coverage just to make sure that everything's going to be good for the upcoming year. All right? And it doesn't cost, right? No cost for my help. Never does. We are Medicare-focused. 90% of our business is Medicare. The other 10%, as I said in the beginning, it's just other products that Medicare folks need. All right. You want to learn more. You have more questions. Anything specific. You have my email there. That's my website. There's my phone number. You can go to my website. You can schedule an appointment by hitting uh, get a quote. That'll take you right to my personal calendar. You can email me or you can give me a call. Whatever you like to do. We're always here. We do actually enjoy working I've been doing this for 17 years, but I didn't enjoy it. I'm crazy, right? Because I don't get a salary. I only get paid if I help people. So my job uh, relies on me enjoying what I do to help as many people as possible. All right. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, let's see. We'll go to the chat area here. Boom. All right. One second, guys. Bear with me. Technical difficulties. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, come on, Paul. I apologize, guys. All right. My lovely office, by the way, in case you haven't seen it. I am a big Giants fan. You can see my Lawrence Taylor there in the background. We're going to do a quick back to here. Boom. All right. So now looking in the chat here, we get the same questions over and over again. So typically people ask me when and how do I enroll? Okay. We went over that in a couple of slides. When do you enroll? It's going to depend on you personally. All right. So if your particular situation is uh, you're turning 65 and you need Medicare right away, well then I recommend you roll uh, within the first 90 days before the month you turn 65. This is the best way to do it. Uh, you do get that seven-month window, so you can do it three months before, the month of, three months after. Okay, seven-month window. You should never have a late enrollment penalty for that unless you're out of the country and just didn't know, or you're in a coma. No, but seriously, uh, and where where do we enroll? 
We went over that too. That's at the Social Security office. Either go online at socialsecurity.gov, always.gov, guys, be careful. Lots of uh, predatory websites out there, anything, medicare.gov, socialsecurity.gov, the government always has .gov, not .com, not .net, not .org, all right? Uh, how will I know if all my prescriptions will be covered? Okay, so great question. Uh, that is, you know, very specific. I don't know your prescriptions, but I do recommend that if you want to look up your prescriptions, you could do two things. One, you could do it yourself. Go right over to medicare.gov. It's pretty simple. You can walk through it. If you need help, you can give me a call. We can jump on a Zoom call. I could show you how to do it. Or if you're like a lot of people that just don't can't be bothered, you can contact me tomorrow. Send me a list of your prescriptions, and I'll run a comparison for you. And then I'll send it to you so you can see exactly how much your drugs cost and then explain everything if you have any questions. All right. What else do we got here? How much do I get paid? <laughs> well, it depends on which type of plan. We get compensated from the carriers. Typically, it averages out to about $25 a month is our residual income. So nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, the drug plans, typically, they only give us, if you're brand new to Medicare, the new commission is $100 for the plan for the year. Sounds like a lot. Way more work goes into a drug plan than you could ever imagine. And then on the renewal side, we get half. So that's that. How many carriers do you work for? A lot. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I'm licensed in several states. I have carriers that are niche or local in, in every state, and that I have the majority. So in most states, we're going to be doing, talking about United Healthcare. We're going to be talking about Blue Cross and Aetna, Cigna, Humana. You know, those are the main five. WellCare comes into play quite a bit with drug plans for me, uh, but typically most states, I'll be I'll I'll have about twelve to fifteen carriers that I'm appointed with, and you know that'll that'll turn into sometimes forty plans, fifty plans, depending on how many Medicare Advantage plans are offered versus how many supplement plans. How do I set an appointment to speak to you? Great question, my favorite question actually. Uh, put your email in the chat and I will send you over uh, my personal calendar and you can pick the day and time that works best for you. All right. Do you do in-person meetings at your office or in somebody's home? Okay. Another great question. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we have agents that will meet you in your home. Sometimes we meet in the office. Do have office, of course. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, not many people have come to visit it since COVID. So uh, it almost seems like it's a dying thing, the people that want to come meet face-to-face. -face. And there's pros and cons to this, right? Obviously, if you meet someone face-to-face, -face, I like it, I enjoy it. I feel like I've got a better read of the person, feel more comfortable. So I get why people want to do it. And obviously, I'm a visual person too. I like to see things. Sometimes you could talk to me over the phone and say things that make sense. But for me, it's not making sense in my head. So I like to meet people personally sometimes too at least do a Zoom call because you can do a lot of cool stuff on Zoom. I got a whiteboard. I can illustrate. I can draw on things. I can highlight things, all kinds of fun stuff to make things a little bit more easy to understand. But yeah, absolutely. We could pretty much set you up for anything depending on where you are. We have agents that are up in the capital region on down to all the way out east in Riverhead area. So we pretty much got most of New York covered. We have Agents in South Carolina, we have agents in North Carolina and Florida as well. All right, I think we got all everybody's questions. Looking down, we're just a little bit over, not too bad. All right, guys, I once again, I appreciate everyone that came so, so much. I really look forward to hearing from you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, let me know, okay? I'm here to help any way I can. Have a great night.